Yes, sir, my boy. You know what that taste is? <laughs> it's the taste of the morning show, God damn it. Welcome. Thank you guys for being a part of your morning routine. Good fucking morning. Great morning. Baby boy, myself. Today I heard you had an altercation. Yes. I got some I got some shit on my chest. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> what happened, baby boy? So head over to the gas station. You feel me? I'm gonna buy some black rifle. Mm. You know, get this show. Not a literal black rifle, black rifle coffee. Coffee, yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, huh? Yeah, you gotta clarify. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to buy. I don't some. want them knowing you're buying AR-15s yeah. in your morning. Bro, I don't need to get raided. I don't yeah. know the feds are raiding me, but yeah. I went ahead and got the black rifle coffee. Mm. And when I was in line, I was obvious. I was literally the next person in line. Yeah. And I peeped some dude out next to me. He wasn't in line, but he was kind of like out of the line, but uh -huh. he was close. What What does this dude look like? Mother, first like off? a fucking redneck, you know, like just. Long white, trash. white, yeah, like just white. The dude had like a bottle of whiskey and like, oh my God. and it's like like ten a.m. and I'm like, what the fuck, like tank top, beer belly, <laughs> dude. Like literally, and I'm I'm like watching him, and he cuts me like, cause oh my God, one of the did he just directly cut you? Pretty much. No, way. he just like stepped right yeah, in front of you. Yeah, pretty much. Like, was he there before you though? Nope. What the I was fuck? there. I was literally in the line. There's like a little like bar that you had to wait by and shit. Yeah. So I'm waiting by it and I, I kind of peep him out and I'm like, why the fuck is he just standing right there? Mm. And I I noticed that like somebody in front of me, they're paying. And then the next cashier over is like, hey, I can help whoever's next. And he just goes for it. He just goes for it. Like he just went for it. And I was kind of like looking at him like, what the fuck? And I kept looking at him. I was mad dogging him to see if he'd make <laughs> eye contact with me. But <laughs> he see just, if he knew what he knew. He yeah, yeah. But he just kept looking like off in the distance, kept looking. So then as soon as like he's done paying, that cashier opens up. So she's like, oh, I can help who's next. So I see him and I was like, hey, man, I was next in line. Mm. And he was like, oh, my bad. I didn't see you. And I just looked at him and I was just kind of like, no, nah, I was next. <laughs> And then like he moves his stuff and he was like, oh, like, oh, go ahead, go ahead. And I put my shit down and the cashier was like, oh, like I didn't see that. And I was like, no, nah, it's not your fault. It's his. I was like, he knows better. Yeah. And she was just like, no, I would have said something if I would have seen that. And I was like, no, nah, I don't even worry. That's not you. Like, that's on him. <laughs> so I remember just like, I was like, dude, fucking asshole, bro. Like, yeah. you didn't have to do that. Trying to buy his whiskey before you. God Dead damn it. ass, man. That shit had me hot. I was like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you clearly saw me in line, dog. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've maybe, I mean, that's pretty, like, everybody has probably seen a couple of those motherfuckers that, like, cut you or, like, do some weird, rude some gesture. Some asshole shit, yeah. Yeah, like, for no reason, too. Because, like, really, what was he saving? Five seconds? Like, you're, he was probably the next person behind you. Yeah. You know, so, so, it's it's kind of ridiculous, but I don't know. I hope that guy has a horrible day today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I let it go. I was like, whatever, dog. I wasn't even going to say nothing. Yeah. But there's just a part of me that had to like just let this <laughs> just motherfucker let know. know. Like, don't do that shit again, dog. Just sprinkle it in his face. For real. Just to bro. let you know, you piece of shit. For uh, real. You like, took my place. Motherfucker. But that's what happened this morning. But I got the coffee, so Does, it was a success. Of course. Do you let little stuff like that affect you? You know what? Honestly, in that moment, I was, like I said, I was really debating on not saying anything because I was like, mm. this is not even worth it. Mm. But. I don't know, man. Like, you can't piss on my head and tell me it's raining. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, I don't let it affect my day. But, like, if someone does something that's out of line or out of pocket, I, yeah. I correct them. And then I let it, then I'll keep it going. I don't yeah. let it come, I don't let it, like, be like, man, fuck this fool, you know? Yeah, yeah, You know, like, okay. I just try to, like, say, say something, say my piece, get it off my chest. And then move on to the next. Yeah, I'm the type of person, I, I don't know if anybody could relate to me, but, like, I can allow some things to slide, especially if it's, like, not big. Like, something like that. Like, obviously, you acknowledge it and you're like, okay, this fucking dickhead. You know? But I'll, I'll let it slide. But, like, if it's, like, a continuous thing. Like, I know some people that, like, like I've come into contact with and they, like, do something that, like, irritates me. And it's, like, a continuous thing. That's when it, like, crosses the line, I feel like, for me. You know oh, what okay. I'm saying? And then, like, I don't know. You're just, like, fuck, like… You're like, really, dude? Like, you know, and it's like, it just eats at you and shit. But like, if it's just like on some like, like they just do some scum shit and you're like, dude, for real. You know, like, but that's, that's because I have like a mellow kind of Vibe, personality. Yeah. yeah. So like, but for other people, bro, like you do something and they're like, <laughs> like, you, you yeah. know, they're fucking about a fucking. Yeah. No, I'm not like that. Like if you do something that I believe 
is inappropriate or out of line, yeah. I correct you. Mm -hmm. But like accordingly to what it is, if it's something minimal, then I'll do like, a, uh, you know, I'll do it like at a minimum. But if it's something yeah. that like you overstep my boundary or my personal space, then I'm going to overstep yours. I'm trying to think like what are some like common oversteppers, we should call them, that people do cutting in line, chewing with their mouth open. No, I'm just <laughs> I mean, no, that, yeah, that's something. <laughs> Slurping on live podcasts. For real. I think you fucking do it, <laughs> this dude. No, no, nah, no. I feel like me would be like um, when people try to get too personal with mm. you, um, like when they get in your personal space or like 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 what do you mean? Like trying to like like trying to uncover your personal yeah, business? Yeah, like that. Like when they try to ask you questions that like they mm. shouldn't be asking. Oh, I see. Too personal, and it's like, well, like that type of shit, like. It's like, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, like, you don't ask that type of, yeah. you don't ask those kind of questions. And like, as soon as you ask that type of question, then I got to look at you kind of like, <laughs> what are you around me for? Like, why the fuck do you want to be around me for? Don't ask me that type so of like, stuff. They're like, hey man, what happened to like, uh, you're like, what the fuck, dude? Like, we're talking about fucking yeah. baseball right now. <laughs> yeah, for real. And then that, that type of stuff, like, I'll just be like, oh, I don't, don't ask that. You know, yeah. that's none of your business. But One thing I, I, I great, it just sparked something in my head. People that are excessively loud. Oh, yeah. Okay, can I tell you an instance, right? So, I'm gonna, I have to like change the setting in this, but like imagine I'm in a library. Okay, so I'm mm -hmm. in a library. The library is known for what? Keeping pretty calm, pretty quiet, yeah, you know, sticking to yourself. Okay, so imagine somebody walks into the library on a phone call. And, you know, a regular person on a phone call would probably, you know, keep it down and, you know, probably mention like, hey, I'm in the library, you know, I'm going to have to like kind of keep a quiet voice. Um, well, this person, imagine I'm in the library, this person walks into the library and then proceeds to tell me or proceeds to get a phone call with somebody and starts fucking yelling out his business. And, mm -hmm. and it's not like regular business like, oh, yeah, I have to go grocery shopping. This guy starts to say Personal like… Personal shit? No, it, like, I mean, first of all, this guy was like a thug. Like, obviously, he was just like fucking… Like, he looked all choloed out. Mm -hmm. You know, just straight off the bat. Which is like, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter to me. But like, this guy proceeds to like tell his homies to scoop him… Because he's gonna go fucking get some drugs. <laughs> and and, and, and yeah. like, to me, bro, I'm just like… Really, bro? Like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like one of you? like send a text, dude. You know, or like this, like we're not in the environment to like want to hear your drug fucking stories and like what you're gonna do this afternoon, smoking ops, whatever. <laughs> like, it's none of our business. But like, I don't know. I feel like some people don't get social cues, and that annoys me. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? You, have you ever had any instances? Does that annoy you? Social like people that just disregard social yeah. cues. I cannot deal with. You. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, for sure. Like when people do that type of stuff. Yeah. They don't know how to read the room. That yeah. type, and you're like, man, you just made shit awkward, or you made it weird, or like you've made everyone feel uncomfortable now. Like, what the fuck? Like, but I mean, I guess some people don't have that type of home training. Like, they weren't, yeah, they weren't really shown or taught how to like act in rooms and stuff like that. So they like, or some people just don't give a fuck. I think I feel like that's my biggest like um. What, what like what? How would you say that? Like pet my peeve. Big, pet peeve. Yes. Yeah, pet peeve. My biggest pet peeve. I feel like, which is great because you brought it up, is I think people not understanding social cues. Yeah. And I think that's important in life, and it will get you far if you can understand like how to act and how to be around different people and different environments. Gets you far. Yeah. You know because if you're like always a certain way in every single environment, it's gonna tick somebody off because they're they're not gonna be you know used to it or like. You know, comfortable with that. You have to kind of like read the room and and, and know where to where you stand, kind of. Yeah. No, I know definitely because some people they weren't they don't know they never learned that. Yeah. So when they get into a room, they and don't I think, act accordingly. I think you do it perfectly though because I think how how to do it like if this was like a how to YouTube video, it would be to quietly observe and un understand your environment which yeah, i the think people who you're around exactly like, what are they into or you know why are they why are you all gathering right now for what reason and then yeah kind of just go about it like that like if it's a fun environment be fun with it exactly if it's a serious environment then be serious about it if it's like 
it could be it's going either or then go yeah. either or do it how you got to do it but you know it's a great example of this but and i think you could relate it's like you know you're at a party with your homies and you're like you know having like the party's going on everybody's getting crazy but like you're having a great conversation yeah. with your friend yeah and then this fucking dumbass comes is like hey bro <laughs> yeah. like like like, let, like hey let, let, and they start like inserting themselves in the conversation yes and you're like bro like i understand we're at a party but i'm trying to have a conversation right now with this person yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, haven't you fucking? Yeah, that's into definitely that? <laughs> that's definitely happened. I, you're right because people are drinking. Yeah, yeah. You know, even there's times where like you'll get hella sentimental at a party, like with your boys. You're drinking. You're yeah. a little. You're a little feeling it, and just like, damn, my boy, I fuck with you. Or you're just going Might down be a memory on for fucking, really? uh, Yeah, you're going down memory lane, and then like someone comes and just like. Like they just kind of like fuck that conversation up, and you're yeah. like, oh, fuck. they're like kind of like buddy, like. Just chopping it, like yeah, you're like getting in the mix, and yeah. you're like, bro, like, can you just like two seconds go, over, yeah, there, over there, and then yeah. we'll come to you, yeah. you know, like we'll, we'll get back on our fun shit in a little bit, yeah. And you know, we set a party <laughs> setting, but I feel like in life too, I've had like moments where I'm like trying to have a conversation <clears throat> with somebody or like doing something, and for whatever reason, somebody just like tries to you know break it up, and I'm like, dude, like, give me two seconds, I'll be right with you, yeah, you know, type of shit. No, no doubt. You know, like one thing I'll say too that I don't like that always bugs me is like how. How like some how some men will act towards women, mm. for sure, for oh. sure. Like how some how some guys that like you'll be in a party or in a like in a function setting, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of guys that don't respect like a woman's space, yeah. like her personal space. Like they're like adamant at getting with her or like getting yeah. at her, and you're you can clearly see that she's un, like uncomfortable with it, and you're just there. And I got I got three sisters. I was raised around women, so yeah. like this is something that I've seen throughout my whole life yeah. women being uncomfortable so i i would fucking hate that shit when i would just see guys and i'm like bro like my boy you're ugly as shit she don't fuck with you my boy like get <laughs> like, the cool fuck over there yeah, yeah bro yeah. go over there like it's a dub you you're you're not that guy like <laughs> yeah. go home already dude yeah. like and some foods like i've definitely had times where i've had to put foods in check yeah over like if it's like a random chick and like i don't know her like I'll mm -hmm. kind of just look and just be like, oh, I hope it goes fine. Mm -hmm. But if it's like one of my homegirls or like it's my girl or it's family, then I'm mm -hmm. I'm on I'm on somebody's ass about it. I'm like, hey, you need yeah. to get get the fuck over there, bro. Like, it's off limits. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck who you are or whatever. And some guys they get it as soon as you step in and they see like that you're serious. Yeah. They they remove themselves. But I don't know. I really don't like that shit either. Like how. Guys just don't know how to read cues when it comes to like yeah. women, and it's like, bro, like you're a fucking I feel like creep, we're maybe my boy. The worst people to read cues, like just guys, bro, yeah. you know, because we're fucking dumb as shit. But like, I think you said it perfectly. Like, w like in scenarios of women, and especially like we, you know, that you just put down like men getting, uh, putting themselves in front of women. You know, they're attracted. They want to meet people and talk to people, whatever. There, it, There's a line and definitely there's some people that just don't understand. Even like when the girl is still having a conversation, but you could yeah. totally tell she's like- Yeah, she's not into it. Not into it or just like, like ah, yeah, like and she there, wants yeah. to leave, you know? And you're kind of just like, like, I hope this guy just dips, you know? Yeah. But like, he's just, you know, still on it, still on yeah. it. And just like, dude. Relax, bro. <laughs> no, I, I, I for sure. I, I, you know, I'm not like, I mean, you know, yeah. I shot a couple fades over that. Really? Yeah. Over some shit like that? Yeah. Or was it personal or was it because it somebody was acting weird? It wasn't. It was just weirdo shit. Like the homie was acting weird. He was being a goofball, like mm. sus. And it, to someone I knew I care about. Yeah. So I was like, what's up, fool? Like, you know, like what, what's going on with you? And then, you know, things, they escalate. But I don't like that stuff. I don't know. I was it's raised around women. It's a, yeah, so. yeah. Totally. I don't like it. I don't. I don't. I don't go for it. Me, me as well as raised around around women, but I think it's important that you stepped in to not only like. I mean, I get it. You guys probably hashed it out. Uh, you guys fought, whatever. But it was important that you corrected him in that way, because next time, you know, when he's in a situation like that, he knows that, like, you know, oh, you know, not everybody fucks with like the person that's always trying to, you know, be persistent on women and be yeah. weird and, you know, so he might correct himself after that. So I think it is important that we like kind of step in and, and tell people like, yo, you're being weird, dude. You're being, yeah. you're being weird. Yeah, yeah, kick rocks. Go over there. <sighs> yeah, man. Me. The world is, you know, I love the world, but also filled with weirdos. Yeah, <laughs> nah, dude. No, honestly, real shit. <laughs>
pet peeves. Let us know your fucking pet peeves. Yeah, I put in the a, put in the comments, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. I want to I want to know what people got to say. About I want to see shit. a whole list of pet peeves. Like that would be like that would make my day. Just like I hate when pe- somebody does this. I hate when somebody does that. like, dude. I want to read all of them. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it. in the topic of news, you know, Pharrell Williams. We've talked about this before. <sighs> he just man. got. Great guy, culturally important, great music as well. He's a kind of a trifecta of a person, an artist at heart, many different lanes. Um, he just got the opportunity to be the head creative director at Louis Vuitton. That's dope. Which is very cool. So what I wanted to do is kind of, you know, give this statement from Louis Vuitton themselves and then also kind of show you Pharrell throughout the years. And then just get get your take on it and kind of how you feel about him. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. All right. So first off, it says... This is straight from Louis Vuitton. Their Instagram page it says Pharrell. Um, well, let me start from the top. Louis Vuitton is delighted to welcome Pharrell Williams as its new men's creative director. His first collection for Louis Vuitton will be released next June during Men's Fashion Week in Paris. Pharrell Williams is a visionary whose creative universes expand from music to art and to fashion, establishing himself as a cultural global icon over the past 20 years. The way in which he breaks boundaries across the various worlds he explores aligns with Louis Vuitton statue or status as a cultural mason, um, reinforcing its values of innovation, pioneer spirit, and entrepreneurship. Then they just go on to say, "This is the head CEO of Louis Vuitton." He's just saying, "Like I'm glad to have Pharrell. Um, he's excited to see what he does uh, in the future for Louis Vuitton." So a I, big thing for him. Yeah. You know? First off, your take. Of just knowing Pharrell. What do you know about Pharrell? Just off legend. the bat. I mean, legend. Like, you know, you had the early, like, 2000s R&B shit that he was doing with mm-hmm. um, Jay-Z. His own stuff. Um, the, the Snoop Dogg song, Drop It Like It's Hot. Mm-hmm. Um, surprisingly, looks very young still. That's mother. This dude <laughs> don't fucking age, bro. I don't know age, how he does it, bro. I don't know. Yeah, he don't fucking age. I think what they wrote about him was very, very true. Like, he is a, cult- a cultural global icon and yep. he has broke a lot of boundaries when it comes to fashion, when it comes to uh, uh, music, singing, R&B. And he, I mean, he's his own, he makes his own music. He's a producer. Um, he's kind of done everything. He's done it all, bro. He's yeah. done it all. And then even with the BBC ice cream thing that he did with that that brand mm. and mm. like, you know, that BBC ice cream, that's, you feel me? That shit had its own movement. The it's pants. history, dude. Yeah. I mean, dude, we this could be a four-hour conversation if we go that deep. But like, I don't think people understand like like the fundamental things that happened throughout history, and a lot of them be- came from Pharrell Williams. Like, streetwear wouldn't really be a thing if it wasn't for ice cream and Nego and mm. Bape and all these like you know early kind of uh, foundations that we kind of picked up after and took along the way. Um, but Pharrell was kind of not only in music but fashion, and that's why I think Louis Vuitton picked him um, as far as a new creative director after the passing of Virgil um, was because, dude, when you look at, like, the culture, who has kind of influenced, you know, fashion and just, like, art, and it's very few people. Kanye, you know, he's kind of went off the rails, so they can't choose him. Uh, but then you have <laughs> Pharrell and, and uh, Jay-Z, you know. Not Virgil, so much. yeah. Virgil. I mean, although Virgil was never, like, a musician, but he mm. still did a lot of other things as well. Yeah. And, and he was, I mean, believe it or not, bro, like, I don't know if you get too too deep into Virgil, but this guy's very smart, bro. Like extreme. I know a smart. little bit about about his upbringing and stuff like that. Yeah, like the 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 videos I like to see most of Virgil is like when he speaks at colleges and shit, and uh, he talks about like design. And he was fashion. a professor too, right, or something like that. At one point, he tried to, he taught at like like Harvard or something like that. I think for a little bit. I have. No I could idea. be wrong, but I think he did teach a class for like a little bit. At oh least. yeah, I think maybe he did teach a class for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fucking. That's. So admirable that he's willing to give up that game like that and stuff. But. Bro, he is like the only person in like industry really that's like for the kids, for like teaching young people to like, you know, better themselves and, and also like inspiring them and giving them the game, um, which I think is important because a lot of people just kind of like, you know, don't give back. Maybe it was because he was passing away. Like he knew he had cancer. So like he was just in this moment of like, I'm going to give you all this shit. So like you guys can, you know, be yeah. the, the next, you know, yeah. like. And I think, like, you know, obviously he's passing away, but, like, we have to always be, like, you know, in that mindset of, like, instead of thinking about ourselves, let's think about, like, how we could help each other, you no know, doubt. and inspire the next. Um, it's just a good philosophy to have. But back to Pharrell. Mm. 
um, cultural icon. So we're going to go down the history timeline. The next slide is Pharrell in 2002. So this is like early emergence of him being in, you know, that whole like new streetwear, Jap emerging Japanese culture with Nigo, the ice cream shit. Um, right here, this photo I thought was hilarious because, you know, obviously he's wearing a crown and a hat above the crown. Like, it makes no sense, but also it kind of encapsulates fucking Pharrell. Like, he's just, like, doing crazy, like, shit. And, like, he doesn't care about... Like, look at this guy in the background. Yeah, bro. he's, like, looking at him, like, what the fuck? But, <laughs> but like, this picture was amazing because I'm, like, that captures, like, the media, the world of just, like, not understanding Pharrell. But, like, Pharrell just being so chill and, like, I'm going to do me and this is me and, like, fuck y'all. No cap. Yeah. Okay. agree with that. Okay, next one. It's still within the same era, 2005. This one, I think you know a little bit more about. Yeah, yeah. In 2005, Pharrell and Nigo partnered up on Billionaire Boys Club and Ice Cream Clothing Lines and the flashy, playful, oversight aesthetic of Bape becoming a mainstay of millennial, millennial. hip-hop fashion. Fuck, I got fucking… You're good, bro. <laughs> All right, so this one I want you to kind of talk about. Like, what do you remember of this era of Pharrell? I mean, this was probably like the Snoop Dogg stuff. Drop it like it's hot. All that mm -hmm. stuff is, is Jay-Z things. Um… That was very streetwear, his style. I mean, you can even tell the aesthetic of his jacket. Yeah, man. Um, the chain. The chain goes Remember crazy. Remember those? Yeah. I, Pharrell, dude. And this is why he sits at the top at Louis Vuitton right now. Pharrell, dude, with the chains, with the jewelry. Dude, he's just like… that. People weren't doing that. No. Nah, Putting weren't. cartoons on a chain. Like, that was before… Like, now people do that. And that's 2023. Bro, I love cartoons, bro. And… Like, and Shit, like he he's been doing it. He's been doing it, bro. He's been doing it. Like, I don't know. There's something special about this dude, and I think it's like him not giving a fuck, but also like under like I don't know, dude. He's just like so fucking smart when it comes to fashion. Like, you'll see, like he goes later to get like refined fashion, and he's like wearing his suits and mm -hmm. like you know is more dapper and like starts wearing the hat and shit. But like, he's like always like understood fashion and like where the culture stands and how to push the envelope and like i don't know now that's why we're talking about him god damn it <laughs> yeah no honestly like you can see why he is who he is because yeah and where he sits at because yeah fuck. like look at the yeah mammy he had like all black you feel me like the the, the fucking sweatshirt goes crazy I think that might bro. be an early baby yeah it looks like it looks like it and just the chain like a big and heavy like Drip. Yeah, drip as <laughs> fuck. All right, 2015. This is like what I said. He gets more refined. He's more into his fashion shit. He's kind of, you know, being a little different. First, first, would you wear that hat? <laughs> no, dude. Honestly, when I, I remember how viral that was when he started doing that. Yeah. I was kind of like, bro, why can't you wear something else? But Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the hat. But we do remember Pharrell for wearing that hat. Almost it was kind of like a cultural time stamp and like a part of his character and who Pharrell Williams is, you know, in history. Um yeah, not not big not big of a fan, but he this is another instance of him kind of pushing the boundaries. Yeah. You know, like you know how much people probably told him he looked fucking like goofy and stuff. A lot. A lot. Yeah. I want I mean it, I wonder why he thought that was the way to go. That'd be a nice thing to maybe learn about or hear more about why he thought that hat yeah. Was like the thing, but I mean, everyone was talking about it. So I guess that's what the whole fucking point of it was for us to speak on it. Maybe he says, because I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that song was so crazy, man. Yeah. I remember remember yeah, that song? Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, it, it just amazes me, bro. Because while he's making that fucking I'm happy, like, he's doing the whole fashion shit and like, he's like almost at the top of the game in like both industries at once. Yeah. I'm I'm literally saying it, bro. It's very rare for people to do that. And you know, it's it's kind of interesting to see the like the relationship that um musicians and fashion have. Mm. Cause at times you it really looks like a musician is supposed to be in touch with fashion, mm -hmm. especially like high, high music musicians, you know? And it kind of seems like culture mimics whatever like Pharrell or like you know Jay-Z or even different artists in different genres mm -hmm. we sort of mimic that a lot with the fashion mm. so it's it's um it's kind of crazy to see like you're just known for your music but then fashion becomes a very big part of a musician's 
brand and oh, their yeah. identity a lot of times. A hundred percent, dude. Like they do go hand in hand. When you're looking at your favorite artists, you're not just acknowledging them for their music, but like how they look, their persona, their style. Pharrell Williams, we all know him for the iconic, just like glasses, hats, coats, you know, suits. Like he's fashion. Kanye West, like, you know, with the Yeezy and everything and like, just like another kind of taste on fashion. Who else can we talk about? Fucking like who's like a, a rapper icon for like like that like Fifty Cent? Yeah, for sure. Fifty. Um, like kind of talk about like that baggy movement of just like chains, bag, train tanks. Yeah, and I will mean that you had like that was like two thousands. You had like Dr. Mm. Dre with like the oversized shit. You had Eminem and like big ass pants. <laughs> I mean, you had Fifty Cent going crazy with like. You feel me? Just like that was like the no shirt era too. You yeah. feel me? Like fools would just take their shirt <laughs> oh, off just and just oil. <laughs> yeah, bro, just tats. You had who like you had so many musicians that you had like Joel Santana, the New York shit that was going on. Fuck. Like you had like Dipset. Everyone was like big baggy fucking pants, shirts. Everything was big and oversized, and that shit is. I mean, it's making a comeback. You can see a lot of the yeah. younger generation is starting to wear it and stuff like that, but. It, you know, like, you know, even my mom would tell me, like, fashion recycles itself. Yeah. That's how it works. Do you like, think we'll ever recycle this Pharrell huge hat? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think that I was something that, I think that I was unique to him. I think that yeah. was something that he chose to wear for himself. And, I mean, look at him. He fucking looks happy. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the hat, but also he's known for the glasses. Like, you remember those, like, circular Chanel yeah. glasses? And, like, now he's wearing— What about the Kanye ones? The one that had the lines in, in between them? Remember those? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's, like, a generation of Kanye that we remember. You yeah. You know, like, the line, the line glasses with, like, you know, the fucking um, lineup and, like, he's, Yeah, like, the designs on the, the shit like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, but the baggy movement, it, I mean, it, it's, it's been dead for a very long time. But mm. I, I think it's definitely coming back. And— Everybody does the bag. I see girls that wear baggy pants on purpose now yeah. and like oversized hoodies now and fitted hats, you know. So fashion right now, it's it can go, it's it's anywhere you want it to be, you know, like yeah. straight up. Like you can find your group wherever. I'm, I'm interested in fashion. You know, I want to get into this conversation after about like what fashion looks like, you know, especially with Pharrell and like what's the next thing. But let's go on to, to Pharrell 2000. 26. So this is after, I mean, uh, still in the same era where Pharrell is doing, you know, like getting this new sophisticated style. He's doing suits. He's kind of like experimenting with like fashion and different sort of like looks and just his personality really. Like he's just, he's just a big experiment and he's not really like being shy. You know, like here he's wearing a Chanel jacket with like pearls. Obviously he's a man. So like uh, guys and, and just like the media is kind of like what, you know, so like He's still again pushing boundaries, and this is in the same area. Yeah, um, no, no doubt. That's that's him being um, trying to be different. Yeah, even the hair, yeah, cut. The, hair too. <laughs> the haircut looks kind of <laughs> a little crazy, but I mean that's crazy though that you point that out because women typically only wear pearls, and I yeah. I, I, I just noticed that that was like a pearl. And a few guess pearl what? Chains. Guess what came back recently? Pearls, pearls for men. For men. But I don't know if you've seen that, but like amidst like the young crowd yeah. right now, they're wearing like pearls, pearls, chokers and shit. It's cause like it's like the same thing with the earrings, bro. Like it was yeah. back in the day, it was like if if you were a man and you had the earring on your right side, yeah, yeah. That was like a typically like a gay thing. Yeah, yeah. Any type of piercing for a man was like that was considered gay, but I mean like And then they're like, it's, okay, it's okay for, for one ear. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, only for the left ear and then yeah. and then guys started doing both. Yeah. And like, I just seen I a video know, of Wack One Hundred critiquing guys wearing nail polish. I mean, Wack is just like the old head, right? Yeah. But like, he was he was saying the things about the earrings, and that's why it kind of clicked with me because he was saying like earrings was cool for him, for but only for one ear, and then now people wearing two earrings. Now he's seen people wearing like nail polish. Yeah. And that was like you know during his age, like no, if you wear nail polish, like no, like they don't mess with you. Um, so it's because, bro, like you grow up in the hood, bro. Like in yeah. the hood, like your masculinity is it's it's almost it's a currency. Like in order mm. to to survive, you have to be a man. So that makes sense. But I mean, you look at like natives and stuff like that. Like people been been yeah. There was tribes that had fucking tattoos. They had piercings. They had. It's like it doesn't matter as long as 
you like it, I feel like, wear it, my boy. Like, you yeah. know, if, if that's what you're on, that's what you're on. Like, if it looks clean on you, fuck it. I'm not even tripping on it. Is it something, yeah. I mean, personally, would I ever get into? Maybe not, but who knows? But it's something that, like, if, it, if it floats your boat. We're at fault with thinking that everybody has to look the same. That, like, I have to like exactly what you, baby boy likes. And, and the whole world has to always be on the same page. But, like, really, we have to just respect other people's, like, what they do. You know, yeah. if, if, if Pharrell wants to wear pearls and fucking Harry wants to wear a dress, if that's his vibe, that's his fucking vibe. Nobody gives a fuck, you know. Let them allow them to do their thing and be who they are and express themselves. Personally, does it have? Do you have to rock with it? No, you know. We, yeah. and, and it's it's okay to yeah. be like that. Yeah. But I think we get in this whole dilemma. Where it's like, oh, like they shouldn't be wearing that. Like, can we allow them to? Wear? Like, it doesn't matter, bro. Yeah. Where were you? Like I said, if it floats your boat, food yeah. fucking wear. But I mean, the the pro shit low key looks easy. Like you know, I kind of fuck with it. I I fuck with it too. And like I said, it our generation, it was the earrings, dude. Like yeah. having two earrings was like. Oh no no like that yeah. was we like you were you were that, considered bro. gay and then now I'm an adult nobody cares no one gives a <laughs> fuck anymore like you were yeah, you were it's like not even a thought you're yeah, just like <laughs> exactly and that was like even skinny jeans i remember when yeah. when skinny jeans became a thing oh fuck dude if you were wearing skinny jeans your ass was grass and fools <laughs> would make fun of you and then like and 2 years later like the jerky movement came up and everybody everyone wearing. was wearing skinny jeans and guys were wearing like yellow skinny jeans red skinny jeans and it was like oh, no yeah, one gave a fuck yeah jeans. checkered no one gave a fuck oh, no more it, it it flew out the window so like you just got to like have an open mind and open yeah. heart to shit and i think it's going to work out the way it needs to for you honestly like especially with fashion you just need to like this one not yeah. give a fuck Push the and I think that's that's the overall theme of fashion. It's breaking boundaries and and allowing, you know, just the clothing or just like you know the concept of the clothing to speak for itself and not so much like, like I don't know. I feel like people are too like fixed and and straight about like, well, I don't really like that. Like fashion is supposed to be like you know exploring different ideas and feelings and like you know all these like different things through clothing and and if and if we don't allow that if we don't allow the people at fucking balenciaga prada chanel you know gucci to like you know push boundaries and and see what they like and allow other people to feel comfortable in that set of clothing then we're just gonna be all fucking stuck in like fucking same color t-shirt same color pants like you know yeah and we shouldn't allow that like fashion is expressionism and and it lets you build your character like pharrell no doubt uh, and i i think i yeah I mean that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I definitely agree. I like, I like, you put it very well. But you know, it's to me, it's it's clothing and whatever mm. you want to wear, wear it, bro. Ain't nobody tripping on it, you know. And if someone's yeah. tripping on you about it, then you know, fuck them. <laughs> no, hundred and ten percent. I kind of like the idea of like, you know, because there's a lot of hate in the world, and there's a lot of people that you know don't like certain things, and you know, you've seen it, and I've seen it. The world has seen it, like, you know masculine females or you know feminine males like men wearing you know more you know feminine like you know apparel and mm -hmm. shit and the, the vice versa of that um i i like how they like have almost like this like i don't care you know and if and if and it comes to that point where like somebody's pressing you about it they're willing to like defend themselves because of like that's their identity mm -hmm. you know and i think that's important it's like if you like something Say you fucking like it. Who gives a fuck if this person next to you is like, dude, like, like if they have these like, you know, negative thoughts towards you or just like any sort of yeah. negative energy, it's like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. You know, like I will fucking rock your shit. Yeah, I, <laughs> for real, huh? I'll beat you the shit out of you. Just over some pearl necklace. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? But like, that's what it comes to. It's like, we need to like defend what we like, you know, and, no doubt. and, and be who we are, like definitely forever, you know? And not allow people to get in our heads. Because, like, I mean, a lot of the times, too, we pick our outfits on the perception of other people. Or, like, we decide who we are on the perception of other people. Yeah, no doubt. You got to, like, get get that out of your head. And if it's if that's your style and that's your culture and that's something you want to go for, then I don't see why not. Because even you said, like, you have a lot of women that dress like men. And mm -hmm. then you have a lot of men that dress like women right now. And to have an opinion or a say-so on it, who gives a fuck, bro? That's their, that's their life. That's their choice. Let them handle, let them do their thing. And to me, at the end of the day, what matters is the person behind the clothes. You feel me? Like, if you're a good person, 
I'm not tripping 110%. on it. I'm not tripping on any of it. And it, hey, like, if it looks fly on you or, or whatever, I'll power do you, fool. Keep wearing it. You know, that's you right there. Fuck that's yeah, what's dude. up. Like, I'm not tripping on it. I'm pretty sure I wear some shit where people are like, oh, you look too typical. And it's like, <laughs> man, fuck you. No, but, I, yeah, but I like, but you like what you <laughs> but wear. But yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it's, and you know, it, it goes both ways because there's a lot of people that you meet that have like a very high sense of fashion. Mm. And then you come in wearing like a white tee or a 501s and they're like, oh, you look like, you don't you don't know how to dress and it's like hey wait up my boy <laughs> i'm not judging you, you my boy yeah. so don't judge me exactly. okay just because you, just because you look like that don't mean you gotta you need to tell me how i look like it goes both ways because there's some people that think they have like this heightened sense of fashion yeah they're like dude my rick owens and my goddamn um balenciaga yeah like, bro like, and they'll be like you're whatever you're wearing it's not in and it's like nah yeah. my, like, and that's hey. the snobbiness to the fashion culture. and it happens it happens, it happens people all the do time, that dude. people it do that so it goes time. both ways man it goes both ways 110 percent. i like how you plug that in because you know we're talking about this side but there's also another side to it where definitely snobby fucking consumerist fucking fashion snobs are just like oh like but you're not wearing this but you're not wearing this and it's yeah. Like, yeah it's like shut the fuck yeah, up yeah fuck off yeah it's <laughs> like dude yeah they, let us just be us this transitioned perfectly into this video of pharrell this is pharrell on a big boy um the tv fucking what is it tv show podcast big boy radio. channel big boy radio big boy radio um big boy asks him about fashion and individualism and this is pharrell's response Real quick, I'm gonna be on there one day. Let's do it. Let's do it. No, it's gonna be called Baby Boy. X Big Boy. No, wait. Wait, what is this? A big Boy Neighborhood? Baby yeah. Boy Neighborhood. Shit. You know what I'm saying? God damn it. To, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna tell him when I get there, like, hey, let's, let's, for this time, my episode, Baby Boy's Neighborhood. Like, let's get he's it. like, welcome to Baby Boy Neighborhood. <laughs> I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that. Let's get it. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? And I think that like individuality is a. It's a wonderful thing. It's the reason why Drake is so good. It's the reason why Lord is so good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the reason why, you know, the West Coast on um, Tyler, the creator, and mm -hmm. our future and Kendrick Lamar. Like these are all like none of those guys sound alike yet. And still they're all out at the same time. Right. Doing their, you know, perspective things. Right. right? So it's betting on yourself and betting on your difference and appreciating the rarity of, of how you think. A lot of people, for real, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? No, people they want to, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, you know, like, this and is working get, right and then now. You get, and then you get trapped in that, you know right. what I mean? And then you get camouflaged in that, and then you wonder why, like, nobody can't point you out in a mugshot. Mm -hmm. you know right, 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 right. Um, we kind of covered that, but yeah. We did cover it, but I, I, I want to kind of, this kind of validates the whole yeah. conversation almost. Yeah, it does. I think what he said right there at the end, it's like, you know, the rarity of individualism, personalities, it's the reason why we have all these iconic people. We literally just spoke about this. But towards the end, he says, and then you wonder why people can't point you out in a mugshot. It's because, like, you know, if we're all going to have these mental stigmas of, like, oh, I can't be myself, and, like, we're just going to all default to, like, what, what the culture seems acceptable, then we're all going to be the same fucking person. Yeah. And then when we're in the mugshot and they're saying, like, oh, who is... Elijah, who is baby boy, they're not going to know anything. They're just going to be like, well, they look like everybody else, you know, but it's important to just be yourself and accept, you know, the rarity of your personalities and what you're into and, you know, kind of lean into it. I agree, man. I feel like, okay, Virgil, Pharrell, dude, these are very smart fucking people, dude. And like, I don't know, like if you do a lot of like deep dive, because like I was watching a lot of Ed Pharrell interviews and like, even back in the days, like 2000, 2005, we're talking about like, you know, the era of like all this shit. He's very intellectual and he knows what he's doing. Um, I love us, not only a creative person that's like very good at the creative side to them, but they're very in tune with like just everything and they're very smart. No, nah, definitely a very knowledgeable guy. Yeah. And then like 50 Cent rapper but also i think is he a billionaire i don't think so he's probably a millionaire though for millionaire sure. but yeah. like smart water sold it to fucking what coca-cola yeah for like millions of dollars even g unit his g unit brand and stuff like that oh, the clothing yeah. brand the shoes you know just <clears throat> these guys they know what they're doing man like they yeah, found their audience uh, and they know they know how to get to it and you know, even him mentoring Tyler, the creator, like, totally forgot. But he's probably, like, the new mm. Pharrell, the new Kanye, like, very innovative in his clothing, his his music. You don't—and he, he's from, like, L.A., like, the West Coast. Like, mm. 
you don't really have a lot of guys like Tyler right now coming out, especially mm-hmm. in the West Coast. Mm-mm. So he's right though. These dudes are fucking innovative. They're own individuals. And the fact mm. that they all exist at the same time and can yeah. be allowed to exist and they don't come at each other's throats and stuff, that's fucking, that just speaks volume. Like individuality, it's it's an important thing for everybody to have, our society and stuff like that. And mm. it's nice when you meet somebody that's not like you, you know? Oh, yeah. But they see things the way you do too type shit, you know? Like that happens a lot. You meet someone, you might judge them. Like they look like a goofball or they look funny and then you talk to them and they're like, oh shit, we're kind of the same person. Like, what the yeah. fuck? We just dress different. <laughs> <laughs> we're, the, we're like, what the fuck? God. So, <laughs> are we the twins? Uh, okay, the, let's get into the topic. Like I said before, Pharrell, we have the history of all this crazy shit. Now he's getting into Louis Vuitton. Kind of what's the next for culture? You know, we've seen the emergence of streetwear kind of emerge. Supreme, Bape, all these fucking huge establishments. We've seen fashion transition to explore new and creative ways to think about, like, you know, clothing. For you, at least, I don't know how in tune and deep you are into the fashion industry or just... But, like, culturally, where do you think we're going? I mean, I think, right, where the culture is, it it makes sense. Everything Mm -hmm. that we're doing makes sense because, you know, everybody is everything right now. It doesn't matter, male or female. Mm -hmm. You can pick and choose what you want to wear. Regardless of your sex. And some, it's like we've reached the ultimate Sims character where like there's no limits. Literally, you know, bro. Pick literally. and choose, you know, literally. whatever the fuck you want, like select, select, yeah. select, select. Create your ultimate character. Yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah. And that's that's pretty much where we're at. Like you have people that, you know, like even like Chicano culture, you know, like lowrider culture, like mm-hmm. you go to different states or like different places and there's people that are not even Mexican American Mm. and they're really big into the culture. So, you know, or even tattoo culture, you know, like people get Japanese stuff or tribal stuff or Chicano tattoos on them and they're, they never grew up around it. Like it, it's, everybody's everything right now. It doesn't really matter where you come from. As long as you want to wear it, you can pretty much wear it, Mm. you know? And I think that's a good thing because Man, who gives a fuck what you look like? Yeah. Is it cool to have like a cookie cutter image and shit like that? Yeah. Of course. Like we we did that when we were young, you know? Yeah, like yeah. you you dress what you look, what you saw. Mm. But as you get older and stuff like that, things change, your mentality changes, your mm. views change, you you live more, you get to see more people, experience more things, experience more life. Yeah. I kind of like the idea how you touched on Chicana culture and the tattoos and stuff. Let's just think about the idea of like some fucking white, white guy in the middle of Nebraska or like some weird, you know, North Carolina, you know, just like some place far out there. Yeah. But has an appreciation for like Mexican or Chicano culture and like the whole history and decides to then go after and get like an inspired uh, inspired tattoo or something on them. Mm. I think that idea is powerful that no matter what position, where you stand, um, you know, geography wise in the world and who you are, you, you can appreciate what you like and you can al- allow it to be a part of you. Yeah, and there's always going to be the naysayers that it's like, oh, that's our thing. Yeah. So like, let uh, like no one else needs to look at that mm-hmm. or look like this or copy it. And I get it. I get it because sometimes when too many people do it, they water it down. Yeah. But kind I, of like spa water. <sighs> Right up, <laughs> but I don't know if they know about that. Let's kind of talk about that. The fucking, the the agua fresca, fucking, you know, um, um, things that they have at like the Swami and shit, where they have like fucking yeah, agua fresca. It has like sandia. Yeah. It has which is watermelon. It has lime and cucumber yeah, or strawberry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like all the fucking white people that I've like, never heard of it come to like spa the, water. Yeah, yeah, they call it spa <laughs> water and shit. But like the idea, it's like they're understanding our culture through their, you know. Cheesy whiteness, you know, quote unquote. But like, that's okay, you know, and and I get it because like we could be mad and be like, dude, like you don't know shit. Like, but that's like kind of the badness to it. You know, Mm. we got to kind of like, if if they're incorrect, correct them, but also be like, you know, like, hey, like if you like this, you should probably try more of this stuff. You know, like our culture is great. Yeah, we got more shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're not just spa water. Like, you know, (laughs) we're not just spa waters. But, you know, like maybe it's just the mindset of being a nicer person and uh, a person. You know, that's 
able to like you know help people understand and, and get people most definitely yeah no i agree i agree with that because you, you're gonna like you said every culture has the naysayers that like you're gonna have people yeah. that don't like that you took that from their culture and did this with it but ultimately like uh imitation is the biggest form of flattery you know like mm. it's when I think that that's that's the topic right yeah, there. Yeah, when someone imitates you, they're just they're literally telling you like I as a person want to be just like you. So you got to look at that as a good thing. That's flattery, <laughs> my brother. Yeah. That's flattery. You, and that's great, bro. Yeah. You know, because like if I if, you know, say you your the your culture is a heavy uh you know, indicator of your personality like you love, you know, your culture and you appreciate it, dude. If the next person takes interest in it, why are you like, dude? They are basically saying they love it too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, definitely. That's that's how I look at it too. Cause I've seen people like that that do shit like that, and I'm kind of I look at them and be like, D but do you, do you know what it means though to yeah. have that? Yeah. Do you know what that means to have that? Like you don't just get certain things on you for just cause you you woke up one day. Not like certain things and tattoos or clothing they have meaning to them like yeah and you just gotta lace them up like hey just know like yeah this is what it means to have it so like you know just know that there's history to this shit and i and i think you know being chicano or just being mexican in general mm. we're rich in culture we're rich mm. in history yeah very rich and in a lot of ways you know like we have the boot stuff you know like caballero mm. stuff you know mm. like ranchero stuff you have chicanos you know you have the lowrider culture you have like everything the from the the, the, kitch, you know, the like kitchen, the, the beer, the yeah. the tequila. Like we have so much culture and it's so rich. It, like honestly, it's it's a blessing mm. being Mexican because it is a blessing. I look at it like that too. Yeah, because some cultures don't have much yeah. anymore. They used to, but they don't. So, like I said, imitation. It's take it as flattery. There's man. like these. Uh, yeah, take it as flattery. There's like these videos on YouTube, and this is like the perfect fucking example of it. It's like this white fucking um, cook, right? Uh, I think he had like a partner with him. So it's like a guy and a girl. Mm. They're obviously not of the culture of, you know, Mexican culture. But in, they go straight to Mexico. They know no Spanish. They know nothing. But they want to cook a meal for a, a Mexican family. So they're willing to buy the groceries. They're willing to, you know, get all the stuff. And also they're willing to cook with them yeah. and learn. Yeah. You know, and, and these are some people that don't know a lot about the culture, but they insert themselves, you know, trying to learn. And the perfect example was like uh, the Mexican family took them in and they cooked a beautiful meal. They taught them all about like their culture and the tradition and what they do at the dinner table and like how they, you know, like basically – everything that they do and I just thought it was beautiful because it's like wow they're allowing somebody like an outsider to come in and learn and appreciate their own culture yeah. not saying that that is their culture but saying that like wow like your culture is beautiful and like you know we want to take appreciation for it just like you do I thought that was fucking beautiful no nah, you know, it is like, and wow. I really hope that happens more often with mm. other people too like other cultures and I, I really hope that Cause it just gives us a better understanding of who we are, mm. and I mean we're all human and we all bleed the same and we all have you know the the same body parts, but at the same time it's um we try too hard to be different with other people. Yeah, like if you're not where I'm from, I don't give a fuck. It's a it's a it's a fucked up mentality to yeah. have, and I get it, I get it, I get why we're like that, but. I hope I I hope that continues to happen and people embrace each other a little bit more and yeah. You know, and it's it goes back to fashion. Back Every, to frill. Back to frill. <laughs> it's embrace, embracing your identity and stuff like that. And Individuality. Wow. This was a powerful conversation. Very. And um, one thing that my brother told me to tell you, uh, he didn't tell me to tell you this. But, Daddy loves me. Uh, that too. But he says, it's that pain, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby boy, a pleasure. The morning show. We love you, brother. A great conversation around fro fashion culture. If you guys do like these episodes and if you do like Baby Boy in the Morning Show, comment your biggest pet peeve. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next episode. We're out. We're out. Peace. <laughs>